Welcome to iLector Online. Here's another JE main test question that is actually a fairly traditional one, something you find in a typical textbook. Not always the case with the JEE types of test questions, which may be very different from anything you've seen in a book before. But in this case, it's a very traditional question. So let's read it. It deals with friction. The coefficient of static friction between a wooden block of mass 0.5 kilogram and a vertical rough wall is 0.2. The magnitude of the horizontal force that should be applied to the block to keep it adhered to the wall will be a certain number of newtons with g equals 10 meters per second square. So they're looking for a numerical value in newtons. So let's make a quick drawing. They didn't give us a figure, so it will help to see what's going on. So we have a rough wall. We have a wooden block. The block has mass m, where m is equal to 0.5 kilograms. There's a coefficient of static friction of 0.2, and a horizontal force applied, like this. And of course, we're looking for that horizontal force in newtons to keep the block from sliding. So what's the principle involved here? That's important, is understanding the principle. So to keep the block from sliding, there cannot be a net force. So the principle is that F net is equal to zero. That means we add up all the forces in one direction, all the forces in the other direction, and there should not be any net force. All right. So notice that the block is being pushed into the wall, so the wall will push back with an equivalent force in the other direction, the normal force, which is going to be equal to the force applied over here. Then we have the weight of the block, which pulls it down, and of course without friction the block would slide down, which means the friction force is in this direction, so force friction is equal to the normal force times mu, which is equal to the force applied times mu, and of course this is a static friction. So in the vertical direction, there are two forces. There is the weight pulling down and the friction force pulling back up. And so essentially, since there's no net force, that would be equal to the force going up, which is the friction force minus the mg going down, or zero is equal to the friction force, which is the force applied times mu minus mg. In other words, the friction force times mu equals mg, or the friction force is equal to mg divided by mu. So from the principle that the net force must be zero, you can see that the friction force will be equal to mg, and if the friction force becomes less than mg, that's when the block begins to slide. So all the way up to the point where the friction force is equal to mg, that's when the block is being held up. Essentially, you want the friction force to be at least as big as mg or bigger. If it's bigger, of course, it adjusts itself to be always equal to mg. So, plugging in the numbers, F is equal to the mass. The mass is 0.5 kilograms. The G, which is 10 meters per second square, and mu is 0.2. Notice kilograms, meters per second square gives us newtons. That's 5 divided by 2, that's the same as multiply times 5, so F equals 25 Newtons. So the answer we plug in here would be 25, and that is how it's done. So notice it's a pretty straightforward problem, something you see in a typical physics book, something that can be done fairly quickly. Again, you want to think of, is that how you spell principle? Principle? Seems weird. All right, so, uh, but that's the principle, is knowing that the net force must equal zero for nothing to move. Once one force becomes bigger than the other, once mg becomes bigger than the friction force, there will be net force and the block begins to slide. So that's how we figure out the force required to keep it. And so it requires a minimum of 25 newtons of force to keep the block from sliding. All right, one more for today.